basically um, the importance of attending college and um, kind of how crucial it is to one's future um, or how crucial it can be to one's future. Uh, yeah, thoughts? Okay, Lauren, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I think for me, I, I wish I would have gone to school. I did go to school early, I guess, when I graduated high school, but then I, um, for me, I partied a lot, you know, so don't do that. But I partied a lot the fir my first year, and then I was in a relationship, so I decided not to go to school anymore. Um, and I regret that, I guess, because now I'm 31 and I'm in school now and it, uh, it's much harder because everybody is like 18, 19, 20, whatever. And it's like, you have to relearn everything again. And I also just feel like I missed out on a lot of like, I wanted to be in sorority or I wanted to like just experience like college and it's like you learn a lot in college. So I had to like learn about myself on my own as far as like, who I am as a person, it took like all these trials and tribulations, I guess, I don't know, it was different things that happened in my life to make me where, who I am today, instead of going through college and kind of figuring out who I am, instead I was, I went straight to being an adult and it kind of just sucks, I guess. So now like, I don't, I have to, I don't, I didn't get to live that college life, I guess, where I or got to find out who I was. Um, now I'm work, I work full time and I go to school and it's cool, I guess, because I'm, I mean, look, for me, I'm lucky, I guess I got married and it's good, but same time, it's not, not, that's not the way for everybody. <laughs> so it's like, you know, but um, it, it still sucks though, so I have to pay, you know, I have to go to school every day and also work and be an adult at 31 and still try to have an outside life, you know, it's a lot happening at the same time. So I wish I would have done it earlier so that I could just be an adult and, you know, have a life and be a little person, like, you know, have kids or work would be in my career instead of being in school at 31 years old and doing homework until 2 a.m. when I really want to be asleep because <laughs> I have to get up at you know whatever time in the morning to go to work I don't know does that help a little bit yeah no that makes sense it gives, that gives a lot of perspective for sure, for sure. Um, and what is your job what do you what do you work as right now what's your occupation um I work for a plastic surgeon hey that's yeah, so uh, I'm a patient um, care coordinator. Basically, I just um, I do financing and I uh, well, I don't know, give patients paper. I like basically do the pre stuff you do, like before you go in the office, I guess, or before you see the doctor. I do all that, and then also do like the financing part afterwards. If you want to finance or get a loan or do all that, kind of, I do that as well. So and schedule surgeries. But. <laughs> okay, but. So, yeah, I don't know. Sure. Anything else? I was in the, this is, this is, this Don, you've got to work on your interviewing skills. <laughs> hey, I'm not an interviewer, okay? You know where you can learn that in college. They oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, can I ask some water, too? <laughs> um, yeah, so I grew up knowing that I was always going to school. I remember when I was four years old my dad and my mom would ask me as like a joke all the time, do you want to go to kindergarten or do you want to go to college? Okay. And then it was like the answer would go back and forth, but it was always expected like, this is how you're going to go through life. Um, yeah. And I guess I could have had moments where I rebelled against that or decided I want to like pursue my soccer career or like whatever. I don't know. Um, but I think I was lucky enough that, my dreams aligned with going to school. So there was no pushback from me with my parents to do it. Um, I went to a private school that I didn't necessarily have to go to, but it was my dream. I could have gone to in-state um, for very little money, like a few thousand dollars a year because my mom worked for the Pennsylvania state system. And so I could have gone to one of those schools for, for a massive discount, or I could have gone to her school that she um, worked at for free. And I chose the hardest option, which was to go to a private school, which is a significant amount of money, harder, further away, all of that. Um, my mom always says, she's like, I could have gotten you a brand new car if you hadn't gone to Hampton. I'm like, well, <laughs> like, you know, my life would have been different. And maybe in another world, another life, that would have been enough benefits for me to change the course. But 
I don't regret where I went. I think it was really crucial for me to um, mature and to have a variety of different experiences that I just wasn't exposed to in my small town. And to learn about myself, black people, you know, it was HBCU. So it was like really honing into like all about culture, family, like this is us. Like people <laughs> don't think that we're on the same level as them, but like we are, we're just as smart, you know? And so it was really cool to be in an environment that not only was great to learn in, you know, the stuff in the books, but also learn about life stuff, life skills. I mean, what to do when you're traveling, what not to do, taxes, like how do you interact in a workplace with white people? Um, so code switching, we talk about that. We talk about like all the cool real life stuff that happens. It was just an open environment for me to kind of do a trial and error there and have a lot of like mentors um, and my teachers and staff. Um, yeah, it was, an experience that I think has completely determined like who I am today. And I don't know who you'd be talking to if I didn't go. Wow. Like, and I mean specifically to Hampton too. Like not only did I have like a dope college experience in general, but like I went to the exact right school for exactly who I am. And I think it's up to everyone to figure out what that environment looks like for them. Not everybody needs to go to an HBCU. Not everybody benefits from a small school. Some people are good in a big school. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think you have to find the right pieces and there's a school that fits into that for you. Is there, is there more to that story? Is there more to that sort of preparation and conditioning towards going to college or? Well, I think a big part of why my mom was such a high achiever is that you know, grandmother was the oldest of the kids and she could have gone to school, but she, they needed help at home. They needed help raising those kids, working that farmland. And she decided she was going to stay home to take care of her family. And so she gave up on her dream to get educated for her siblings and for her parents. And I think my mom always thought how dope that was, like so selfless. Um, and so I think my mom, my sister, I have decided that I'm going to do all the stuff like Edna couldn't do, and I'm going to do it all. I'm going to go everywhere. I'm going to seize the day. I'm going to try really hard not to make big, life-glaring mistakes if I can help it. And then if I do make them, I'm going to do my best to like recover from them and still pursue it, no matter how hard it is, because she didn't get the chance to because she was so like devoted. And so it's like my duty to her in the way like I honor her, my mom honors her. Part of that was getting as much education as we could get. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a parent, obviously. Like me and Lauren aren't parents yet, but we can imagine and we've seen like our parents be super invested in us. And when we've done anything to show that we weren't appreciative of that or like squander that in any way, it's horrible you feel bad like it's like this mix of you have to be yourself in life and you want to pursue your dreams and at the end of the day you have to live for you everyone else is going to go at some point and it's just going to be you and you are kind of responsible for what happens with that and there's a way to still be yourself and honor like the hard works of your parents and their dreams for you and I think there's a way you can meet in the middle with that like I think at one point my mom and dad wanted me to go to law school I wasn't going to go to law school, but I'll go to school. And like that was <laughs> meeting in the middle of, you know, that dream. And I think a lot of parents from different cultures think about these first generation kids whose parents like have migrated over here and like worked their tails off to give them what they had. Or think about Cheryl, who grew up in a house with four other siblings. Can you imagine what that's like? Just imagine alone what that's like. You have to compete to get attention. You have to compete for everything you do. She had to work her butt off to have a conversation without the kids interrupting. I can imagine, right? Everyone wants a piece of, there's only two parents. So she had to work hard to go to school and get what she needed because you just can't, you just can't grow up in a house with a bunch of kids and get everything you need. You can't do it. And so then she has this one child, her precious baby. She waited later for in life a little bit. And then, you know, she had gone through all her trials and tribulations and had this perfect little baby and had all these plans for him. And then he said, screw you, mom. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she can feel. 
she can feel like that and she doesn't you know to some extent like she's okay making you feel a little bad but she really doesn't want you to feel like bad she wants to support you so she's not going to tell you that straight up but what parents think about when no one's around and what they cry about when no one's there to watch and it's i don't know you just have to think about giving something a try enough to, for them i think that you have to i know for me i had to um tell my parents well, my parents always told me I had to go to school as well. Like, you know, go to school. If we don't go to school, we're not paying for all your stuff. Like, you know, and they didn't when I stopped going. <laughs> but um, I just felt bad as like a person, I guess, in general after a while. Like, you just start feeling bad. Like, they, my parents invested a bunch of money into all kinds of things for me and my brother. Thousands of dollars for us to go and, and my brother for baseball. For me, it was more like dance and other things like that. But for art, I was really into art. So, um, they invest all this money into me and then I just feel like I kind of just threw it away, I guess. And then when I decided to go back, it was harder, but I had more appreciation for it. So I was like, well, I should have done this earlier. And now I feel like I'm, I, my parents are like proud of me, I guess now. And they would have done that earlier on, on in life. And you know, I'm not instead of the age I am now, I guess. And like my brother, me and him are two different people. Like he's the, I'm the rebel child and not anymore, but I was. Uh, and then he's the like good person, like not the good person, but the, always does the right thing <laughs> so um you're a good one I'm, like, huh? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a good person but you know I'm like he like he it makes it seem like he does the right thing all the time when I'm like the one that doesn't I guess but that's not necessarily the case however I just I do feel like I watch my parents sit there and look at him and be like oh you know he's doing all these great things we're so proud of him we invest all this stuff in him and he felt accomplished I guess I did not feel that way at all I felt like like, what am I doing with my life, I guess? After a while, it was fun for a little while, don't get me wrong, but I would not do that again. Like, I just feel like I wasn't going anywhere. I was kind of like, okay, well, what am I going to do, with, like, long term? Like, this isn't going to work anymore. And then, I guess for me, like, when I watched my brother walk across the stage, my parents and how excited they were, like, that just, like, killed me. I mean, I was excited for him, obviously, but, like, for me, I was like, I want that. I want to feel like they're proud of me and that I'm, I'm proud of myself and accomplished, I guess. That makes sense. And then, you know, it doesn't help my dad will sit there. He'll tell, he told me over and over again about all the money and hours and stuff he put in to provide for that for me, too. So, so that doesn't, you know, but I don't know. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's and I would imagine that the, the style, like the experience that I had while learning the subject I was learning when I was 18, 19, 20, is a lot different for Lauren learning the same, let's say just the general ed. Obviously we have two different majors, but like yeah. the general ed courses that we both took, I bet I would be willing to bet, and I'm sure there's some statistics with this, like you, are, like your brain's a sponge. You've already been in school consecutively for a thousand years. You're used to learning, you're still young, and it's like your brain is working the hardest it can work. So for me to understand concepts and math and theories and psychology, it was a lot easier then than if I took a class now my brain doesn't work the way it did then. Like, it's so hard to learn simple things. And so I can imagine Lauren having to take like a stats class is really difficult right now when she had such a break in her learning and then she had to jump back into it. And it's, you have to, it's a muscle. And so she hadn't been using it in the same way for years before she went back. So. I don't know. Like, yeah. You're right though. Like I had to, well, stats is a good example, actually. I was in hours at school and with tutors or like tutoring groups or whatever you know study groups so that I could learn it's harder now I guess because you said I did take a, such a long break so I have to do like twice as much work as somebody who is coming from high school or coming from I'm in nursing or the medical field so it's a little different I guess because you have people of all ages but you have people who have already been in school and have graduated and now they're going back or you know different things so those people who have been in school like they're do they it's easy for them not easy but easier I guess whereas for me I'm having to spend extra hours and extra time trying just to understand it let alone like comprehend what's that like you know what I mean like 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 or like take it all in soak it all in and like actually use it for my career when they can just okay I, I know that already so it's not a big deal I have to remember that from school and then the other part is things are different now um like in high school, I guess, than they were for me when I was in school, because like the way they first, for stats, for instance, we were doing something in math and um, he's explaining like the this grid thing that y'all use, I guess, I don't know. 
And I had no, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I've never seen this. I just, you know, use a calculator or use, you know, pen and paper, you're good. I don't have to have a grid. Like, you don't do all that. But we had, I had to learn how to do that. And it took me a good couple of weeks and out, like hours in those weeks to figure that out. I was like, I don't understand how this works. So I, I never had to do that. For me, it was like, it was easier without it. But they made you do that to show your work and what kind of stuff. So those kind of instances are just, that, that does suck because you're like, hey, well, if I would have done this earlier, I wouldn't be in this situation. But I mean, hey, it is what it is. I guess for me, I don't have a choice. I'm just trying to get done. But for others, I'm like, I see why it's easier for them because they, I mean, they're 18, 19, whatever years old. So <laughs> they just had math or just had science or whatever the case may be. So you're right. Yeah, there is like that new math and there's new everything. Like when Lauren and I first took the SATs, it was a 1200 score. Yeah. 1200. It was out of 1200. <laughs> and as soon as we both finished, it went to 2400. Like that same year that like after I took it. So even that change happened so quickly, let alone like what they're actually teaching in schools. If I had to go back and learn all the same things, oh my God. Like I wouldn't even know where to start. I'm like, we don't still do the house for the division. I don't. <laughs> well, I helped my friend's little boy do his homework and he's in middle school and I was, she called me. She's like, you can help him because she did really well in school. I'm like, I do well, but this is not the same. <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh, I couldn't help him at all, you know, yeah. so I don't know, but anyways. Okay, so, there, so there's the timing element. So that's why the timing yeah. can be important. Obviously, it's great that Lauren goes now, that anyone goes at any time. Like, you don't lose by going later necessarily with the educational portion. It's just like you are making it harder on yourself in a lot of ways by delaying something that you're probably going to turn 31 and be like, yeah, I'm going to get a bachelor's. Yeah. So Thanks. you're probably going to do it anyway. Yeah, it's a reality check. Like, oh crap, this has happened now. <laughs> Wait, and what school do you go to, Lauren? Um, right now, well, I was at West Coast University. Now I go to TWU, or Texas Living. So, um, yeah, I was in the nursing pro. I'm in the nursing program, I guess. Uh, however, again, like she said, it's different. I also think that, like, for family, I don't know about your, but like y'all, but I know for my family, it was a lot of pressure in general, like. I wasn't in school, no, for, our, what was it, five, six, seven years, I guess, maybe. And I just feel like there's a lot of pressure. Maybe not, no, people will say something to me at first, they stopped saying things to me, and I just felt, like, pressure on me in general. Like, how am I going to continue to function or live life, I guess, without this degree? Don't get me wrong, you, can, you don't have to have a degree to do things, but I think you need to have something because life is just, it's hard if you don't harder to work twice as hard it's hard when you do it is so i'm saying like it's hard if you don't but like right. you know I mean? so comparison it's like even yeah. if you do all the right things and you go in the right steps i have a master's degree i had i was unemployed for years like it's just like even when you do the right life is hard period so why make it any harder for yourself by not getting like the basic and what is basic level education now is a bachelor's and a master's a bachelor's is no longer advanced it's nothing i would say from even from my field like they used to take um uh associate's degree for nursing now that's i mean for what's going on in the world right now that's actually awesome but you know hey but otherwise in general no like that just doesn't make a difference at all like i'm actually like looking into going to pa school now because it doesn't matter what i if i'm doing a school that's, i can just be basically a basic nurse i can't do nothing else with that <laughs> so you have to like in some careers, you have to just, you have to do the highest, I guess, level, because it doesn't make a big difference anymore. You can't go in and do it. And I was going to say, this actually brings us, um, I guess, a really good segue to the next question, mm -hmm. which is, um, do you think that, well, how much do you think, um, the original question is, do you think college, uh, a college education affects your earning power? But my question would be, how much do you think a college education would affect you? I think it depends on your field, number one. Um, let's say you have an MBA. I mean, that's just like dollar signs. Like your diploma is in the shape of a dollar sign. Like that's the point of why people go and get an MBA, even if they know all the stuff. It's about showing like the credentials backed up by a reputable place to say like... Feel chill. Sorry. <laughs> Diesel's getting excited about college. Sorry. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, 
yeah, I definitely, dep I think it depends on what field you're in, but also the confusing thing is you don't really know what field you're going to end up in. The average American has 11 different careers in their lifetime now. And that's crazy. So you like, you have your mom who started off as an accountant and like this money woman and then went into education. And that's only two, if you think about it, just there. And most people have way more than that. So, I mean, just the fields alone I've worked in, I'm only 31 and I've worked in so many different sectors of things, things I could have never predicted even while I was in college. Um, and so in some cases, that degree and that name has been really helpful. In other cases, they just want to see what I can do. And then in other cases, a combination of both. So they want to see my skill set, but also I can negotiate my earnings by saying, I have this. You can't pay me this because there's standards to HR practices. There's standards to companies. There's like world standards for that, at least national ones um, based on our economy here. And so they can't just offer you anything. So for instance, people who have like PhDs, like my mom, they're actually, it's actually harder for them at some point because the, the companies and the institutions have to offer them something to their standard. They can't insult somebody with a PhD and say, we're giving you 45,000 a year. That will never happen. So there's, there is a different level you head up to, which can create some challenges in that, in a really struggling economy when you'll maybe take anything, you can't get anything because you're just too high up. <laughs> so right. it can be a double-edged sword sometimes, but it's just a, there's a level of respect with the letters behind your name. And that equals more money most of the time. I agree. I think it's been like your career for sure. I know for like, I don't have obviously a degree right now. I'm, well, I almost do, but um, like, my, like my husband, he has an MBA and for him, he's an engineer. He's in, he has two bachelor's degree. I don't know. Anyways, he has a lot of different degrees. And um, for him, it, it, it makes a difference, I guess. But he's also not working in the field that he originally was going to be working in either. So if that makes sense. But like you said, he has an MBA, so he's like, it makes it, his money, his, the dollar signs are different, I guess. For me, I don't have a degree, so I'm not making anything. <laughs> so, however, in the medical field, um, it also makes a difference too, because like there's nurses who have, if you could be a nurse practitioner, you can be a PA, you can be, you have your bachelor's, you can also have your, just your RN or LVN, whatever, and all of those make a difference in your pay. So like where I work, you have a, she's an LVN, and we also have an RN. They make, a, there's a difference of like 20, a good $20,000 between their pay checks, I guess. And then like the PA, obviously she makes a lot more than anybody. Um, I don't make any of that, so I don't know. It's it's for, if I did wasn't married, then I would be struggling for sure. <laughs> so like, it's, if that makes sense, like, only reason I'm doing okay because I have a husband who can provide that. Otherwise, I would be. And I did. I don't even know. I did it on my own. I worked four jobs before, so I didn't have a degree and stuff. <laughs> so, and I would go to school, and it's like a lot. But you know, it makes it right do what? I'm working four jobs right now. You do? You are? You like it? It's a grind. It's a grind. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't go, you're gonna have to get married. <laughs> hey. Hey, yeah, you know. Not absolute. Cool. Uh, married at nineteen. <laughs> school. Married at nineteen. <laughs> I don't know. It's that's uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> or you're just gonna get tired of working. That's that was my main thing. I just got tired. Like I was like, this is. I'm nice and you're. Or, well, I was like twenty actually. I was like twenty years old, and I'm working all these jobs. Like for what? I should be having fun with my friends. Instead, I'm at work until 11 o'clock at night, and then I'll go off my friends or do whatever, and then I have to get up the next morning and work again. I'm just like, you, that's why you just get tired. Like, you don't want to do all that. Like, you want to be able to work your, I mean, not, maybe not nine to five, but whatever your hours are and be done. If you work for yourself, work for yourself, and you, you know, you're done for the day. You don't have to worry about it. Instead of grinding four different jobs and then still trying to make things neat, I guess, pay bills and do whatever else. That was my main thing. Like, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And it, don't get me wrong, it took me years to figure that out. And again, everybody's different. So for me, I just got tired. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on the person. But I know like, and my brother would always tell me too, like, he's like, you know, if you just keep going to school, like you can do a lot, you can work one job and do, you know, do your career, or do your, uh, do my dream career or whatever. So I'm like, okay. 
but it just kind of sucks because I had to get there on my own. My parents stopped paying for all my stuff. Like they were like, well, if you're not going to, I think for my school first, and they say, if you're not going to go to school, then we're not paying for your stuff. So I had to learn how to pay bills, and this is going to sound like a spoiled brat, brat, probably. I did not know how to do any of that until then. Like, I never paid a bill until I left my house, I guess. And even after college, like, I, my parent, or my first year of school, I guess, um, I didn't know how to pay a bill until then, because I had to learn. I had no choice. My dad wasn't going to help me. My mom wasn't going to help me. And then that's when reality hit. And I was like, this is just like... This is too much for this little bitty pay. I'm not trying to work for jobs. I want to work one and make some and make enough for I don't have to worry about anything. I guess. I don't know. This, that's just me though. Yeah. I feel like for music, like you could, you could kind of validate the skills we already know you have and the skills you already know you have with like the technical, like you've had this technical training and like here's this piece of paper that says I've had this technical training. So not only is my music good to some people because art is subjective, right? That's the thing. It's like, there's so many versions of art. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But if you go and get a degree in the stuff where there is a right or wrong way, like engineering, like all that other stuff that goes into that industry, you can say. Oh, okay. It's been, uh, it just has more minutes. Oh, okay. um, it gave us more time. They removed the 40 minute time limit. It does that every time. I don't know why I ask like, it does that every time I bid on one. I have a three one too. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just think it's a way to back up what you already know. Like as a writer, a lot of what I would do is subjective also, but then the technical part of it, um, the times where it's fact-based and research-based and being an expert in a lot of subjects, I have this thing to say like, I'm certified gold in this thing. And then it helps me get jobs and opportunities. And I think there are a lot of musicians who obviously have put in the work and they've grinded real hard and they've made it and they didn't go to school. And sometimes they go to school later or they figure out other passions in life like fashion or um, giving like philanthropy or, you know, they figure out their niche, like other things that they want to do that are their passion besides singing or besides the guitar or whatever. Um, but I think it, it, it takes a certain type of person. You have to have so much drive and push and you have to be a self motivator, a self starter. You have to do things before anyone asks you to do them. And you really have to take a moment with yourself in this time and look at yourself critically and say, am I really that type of person? Some of the best people, the most creative, talented, smart people are not self motivators. Like, I know that I need a push. I have the, you know, I have the propensity to do great things, but I'm best when somebody is giving me a little pressure. Like there's a time limit, there's a deadline. Like I work best like that. And I'm not downgrading my talent or smarts in any way by admitting that I need to be accountable. And so I just think you need to really look at yourself and say, do I honestly have something in me already, the maturity in me already to be able to completely launch my career right now on my own. And part of that is being responsible about what makes up your life. Are you buying your own food? Are you cooking your own food? Are you living in your own home? Are you paying your own bills? Are you minding your credit score and watching that and making sure you pay off things in time? Are you going to the doctor and being healthy and not partying all night and deciding, hey, I have a rehearsal the next day. I need to go straight home after this thing like you need to decide if you're mature enough to do that and most people are i was gonna say um because i know you're you, you want to be i mean your music whatever um quentin my husband he does he's a dj on the side um we have a lot of dj friends i guess but they had to go like i know for him and I, if he was here i would tell him to tell you the story but he was like saying how um he's not here right now he when he was in school, he went, he wanted to stop going to school, I guess, and his mom was, and just be a DJ. He's gonna be a DJ. I don't care what anybody else cares about. Like, that's what I'm gonna do, like, no matter what. And his, one of his really good friends is a DJ, and he is very successful in it, because he did that. Um, however, Quentin is not the kind of person. He, um, I'm not saying he couldn't have done it, because he definitely could have, but like, he, he needs a push as well. Like, he'll, he's very distracted easily. So, um, his mom basically told him, they know you're going to go to school. I don't care what you get a degree in, like, you're going to school no matter what. So anyways, and they were a little, 
they're very, uh, I don't know if you've never met his parents, but I guess Joy has. They're like, you're going to do what they say, I guess. So um, he, that's why he got an engineering degree, I guess. Because for music, that was, that helped him as far as DJing and whatever else. So now he, I mean, he still DJs on the side and he loves DJing, don't get me wrong. But then now he also found like other, other avenues he wants, you know, to be in as well. I'm, so I'm saying, I guess you don't have to be an engineer by any means, you don't have to do any of that. But I do think you need to find something else, just, just, and it can help you in your career as well. And also be a backup plan mm -hmm. too, or it can be like another hustle. Like for him, he has a business, the DJ stuff, plus he's an engineer or, you know, at his normal job. So he has three different avenues, I think so. So you can have several different um, ways of making money or just things you like to do in general, I guess. But <laughs> I'm yeah, you could go to school for, I mean, anything like you it doesn't have to actually be related to your music yeah you can go to school and you can discover something else that you really like and that is a good backup plan you enjoy it that's another thing you can really learn about and like dive into and then you can still do your music the way you want to unprohibited untamed mm -hmm. by the common school you know however you're thinking um and do your your thing there and then just get the degree in something else like learn about psychology People <laughs> Learning people and knowing people are always going to be important. Like, go get something in English. Learning how to write and read and take in information and, like, communicate, yeah. always in style. It's going to help for every job. Go get a business degree. How vague is that? Like, entrepreneurship, business. Like, these are all bachelor's degrees that you can get where you can do anything. You can have a restaurant. You can, you can make your own club or bar and then you are the talent, I don't know, yeah. make, make your own stage, you know, make your own yeah. entertainment company where you're doing all these different gigs and maybe that's part of it. Like how do I monetize the talent I already have and get my message out to more people? I'll major in marketing, I'll major in business. Like there's so many avenues. It doesn't have to be getting a degree in music, which some people might be like, oh, that's lame. I respect it, it might be lame. I don't know, I'm not a musician, but maybe if you talk to the music community, they might say, it's not something you need, but I also have a degree in whatever, yeah, or I don't know, yeah, something else that's helpful. I say a lot. I know a lot. Of, I know some other musicians, and they don't necessarily have a degree in music necessarily. It's always something else on top of that. I mean, everybody that I know that has a degree in national music is like a music teacher, to be honest. Like most of them have another degree. Like they're actually like a, they're just teach. Like well, not just teach. I shouldn't say that, but like like they're a teacher, a music teacher at a high school or, um, I don't know, like high, you know what I mean? Like they just, that's what, that's what they do instead of, instead of actually what they really wanted to do. I know for, from my personal experience, just knowing people, they, most of them are just teachers and they're not trying to, they're not doing like their, their band anymore. And they like that. They're actually just, um, which is fine. They like, they like it. But they, I know like, I know somebody, uh, one guy, he actually wanted to be in a band and he stopped doing that. So. I think you can do other stuff too. You don't have to be a new degree. You can also get, like I said, find something else to do. There's several, there's, believe me, I have had to look at my degree plan 5,000 times. There's a ton of degrees that make not a difference in the world. There's also degrees that you can do a lot of things with. <laughs> so I don't suggest like, don't get like a zoology degree in minor, you know. In Actually, that's what you're doing right now with Tiger King out and Big Well, that's true. Cat that's true. Zoology <laughs> that's might true. be where it's at, JV. Come on. That's true. It might be different now, but, but you know, in general. <laughs> or like, for me, I have a really good friend who has a nutrition degree. It's not really helping her at all right now because. Well, now it is because of a uh, pandemic, but otherwise, before that, it, hadn't, it did not help her. She actually went back and got a teaching degree, and she's a professor, I think, somewhere now. So, which is good, but that's not what she wanted to do. If that makes sense, like she wanted to do something else. So, so if you don't want to look at college as like a social thing, I think if your brain wants to look at it in a different way, think of it. Are you? What are you doing? It's just really hot. I'm sorry. Oh, it's like fine in there, so it's like really bitter. Exactly what I'm I don't talking. Think it's like a terrible taste, but it's also like very hot. This is All why right. you need to go to school. Exactly right here. You're not even focused in this on burner. talking to you, giving us. I mean, this isn't changing our lives. You know this, right? <laughs> us talking about what we are already doing and did, not changing crap for us. This is for you. So listen. Oh, I'm listening. I'm, I'm okay. listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Like as soon as I said, he's like, he got up all the way. He's like, oh, okay, we'll get up. <laughs> 
Because she took the cup and then she put, oh, and she put, oh. I appreciate it. Yeah, you got to get out of there. <laughs> Y'all need to be separated. <laughs> this is codependency, right? He, he doesn't want to leave. Do you want to move out or anything? I was going to ask you that too. Do you want to like move out and stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, right now, so, and I mean, I haven't, so I've been, I've been thinking a lot about the college thing too. Um, in terms of going, I think the biggest reason um, right now uh, why I'm not in college, um, one is I do feel like I'm one of those self-motivating people. Um, like if I have a goal, like if I if there's something I want, like I'm, I'm gonna try my best to get it, if not get it straight up. Um, and so like a big reason why I'm, in, I'm not in school right now is to take full and complete advantage of my time. Um, I know that if I were in school right now, because I mean, I went to school for like a good two months, the, the community college, and um, I kind of got a feel for like how it was. And I could definitely see at the time my motivation for like really being in the paint and doing the music and recording and like trying to get content out and stuff was a lot. My motivation for that was a lot higher than getting the homework done and or even showing up to school. Um, like it was really easy. Uh, it was really easy for me to like wake up um, and go and corporate versus waking up and go to school. Um, and I, I guess, it, you know, it's a little backwards, but not not backwards, not from, not just, you know, cause I want to do music. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, I want to take full complete advantage of my time. Um, and I know if I were in school, I wouldn't be able to work for jobs right now. That's another thing I'm building up my finances so that I can, you know, get a new car, uh, get a laptop, you know, get a DAWs, a digital audio workstation, like, Logic or Pro Tools, like, you know, the stuff that they use to record music. Um, and once I do that and kind of get the, um, invest in the right places for what I'm trying to do, um, at that point, it's kind of just a, uh, a release content game and a marketing game. And I've had a lot of, uh, not obviously, I feel like as much um, experience marketing as someone who's gone to college for it, or I guess preparation. But I'd say I've, I've um, done a lot of promoting in the past for stuff that I've tried to get, you know, tried to, for stuff that I've put out. And I feel like my marketing skills and promotion skills are pretty uh, legit at this point. Like I said, obviously not as, you know, probably not as uh, uh, concrete or um, uh, um, or as, uh, yeah, good as someone who's gone to school for marketing. But I think I've done a, um, a well job and I think I'm, you know, constantly getting better at it. And um, yeah, I feel like at this point, it's just like a release content and, uh, and, and promote it, move it uh, game. And I think at some point, so, I mean, I have a lot of resources and a lot of connections. And, you know, like you said, you know, my people, I have a lot of friends and family that know people that are big, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just talked about how, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hugh, his uh, homeboy is the, the, the DJ, successful. Yeah. That's a resource. I, I I play for several other bands too, and through them I'm meeting people and important people. Um, Y'all know the band Lion Babe? Yeah. Um, so I did this thing where I was an artist wrangler, and um, basically like I took care of them while they were backstage, um, and I started chopping up with their manager, and I got the manager's phone number. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm I'm like getting um, different resources and then different um, connections. Um, and I was blessed to have my mom and, you know, my dad's, uh, I'm very blessed to have my mom and dad support me the way they do. And, um, you know, bring me up the way they did, whether it been in theater or like music, because, you know, um, a lot of those social skills like you're talking about in college and stuff, I feel like I've already developed really, really well. And, uh, yeah. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm making those connections and, uh, I feel like at this point it is really just time to release. And that's what I've been doing is just working with multiple different artists um because i don't have my own you know equipment at this point and so like so like I, i'm releasing an album that is with the professional producer right and i wouldn't be able to work on stuff myself at this current point in time because i don't have a laptop i don't have a computer um with the uh the DAWs that i need on it right and this computer here is it's school is it a school computer yeah i don't have the computer i need for it um so i'm saving up for that um so in order for me to record on my own time without Ty, who is the you know, main producer that's recording my album, 
I have to work with other um, friends of mine who are also recording and putting out projects of their own. Um, and so in that, having worked with them and like collabed and done a lot of collab projects with them, and I'm also releasing collab projects with them, that's how I'm able to kind of do my own stuff because it's like, okay, well, he's helped me with, you know, my projects. So now it's like, I can, so from their point of view, it's like they can help me with my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, I mean, yeah, now it's just that time to uh, release, um, yeah, the music. We're actually releasing, one, me and one of my guys um, are releasing a single April 1st, be on the lookout, and then an EP on May 1st, be on the lookout, it's pretty legit. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, now it's, time, it's, it's, a, it's a game of releasing now and really pushing and um, yeah, and uh, hitting different venues and being like, yo, let's perform here. Uh, I just want to know why you can't go to school and do the exact same stuff. Because I'm know, the time. I, wanna have the, I, I really want to have the time. Like, I'll be doing homework. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be staying up to two doing homework. But I could Love be staying up to two. Like, have, you, have, you, um, cause, like, have you thought about maybe the school you were at wasn't the right school for you? And then also, I was going to say, I know you say you want to, like, build up your money um, to get all the equipment. So, I mean, I know... Quentin knows people who have equipment if you really needed some equipment, like, you know, like that kind of stuff, he would, he can probably help with that. But also, um, there's grants and stuff you can get as well. Like, it's for school. Like, I hadn't learned all these different grants and scholarships and stuff. I know you can get that and, like, and not have to pay it back, so I'm trying to say. So, like, yeah. a lot of that can help you get your computer or, like, you know, different different things you actually need oh, for that okay. computers like yeah. huge storage files like if you're a music major you'd have to have a certain computer like if you were an engineering major that computer would fall under school supplies therefore your aid or like whatever your packages would cover it it's like a book yeah. um i mean yeah and a big and another big reason also for not going to school is um school debt and i know there's scholarships and grants and i mean there's scholarships and stuff and maybe it'll be different now because, you know, I've, you know I'm, I'm, a different, I'm at a different place musically than I was when I first auditioned for colleges and stuff. But when I first auditioned, I wasn't getting no scholarships or nothing. So maybe it's different now and I could probably get a little bit more. But like, um, I, I have lots of resources for scholarships because I had to learn. There's a crap ton of scholarships you can get. Like, don't just stop at like, oh, they didn't give me one. There's a ton of places you can get scholarships, like places you would never know about until you like there's a, I have actually a website that one of my advisors gave me and I was like I've never heard of how this place before and like I'm getting money basically free money to go to school so I'm just saying there's don't stop with this okay well they didn't give it to me basically. well, no, no, I mean, well I mean, not only that my, my mom like was very adamant about scholarships and she has like fat books of scholarships that yeah. we were just going through and like ravaging through man like okay maybe this one maybe this one you know putting them all down you know because as an actor it's we're taught you just audition, keep auditioning. It doesn't matter if you don't get it, just keep, keep auditioning and eventually one will hit. Same, we took that same principle, applied to scholarships. It was like, um, let's do these scholarships, all right? Keep on, keep on doing. Of course, I was very reluctant because I hate scholarships. But not, I hated applying for scholarships and having like write essays and stuff. But like, you know, at some point, after your mom like grounds you and is like, yo, you're going to do these scholarships, you can go to college, you kind of start doing the scholarships. And so, I mean, we were, we were doing, you know, scholarships on scholarships. I may have gotten like a few, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, that's just a lot of effort and time. Um, See, that's I mean, the drive I'm to... talking about, though. If you, you know if you're driven, that's the drive I'm talking about. So while you might have a drive to like network with some producer you met, the drive is overall. You have to wake up in the morning with the drive. You don't sleep yeah. in till a million hours past noon. You wake up with like every day is purposeful. I don't have time to mess around. It's an yeah. overall drive. It's not just when you want to do something, when you want to feel driven. It's a, it's a full body, like my whole life is mine and I'm not going to waste any time. And so part of that is doing things like applying for scholarships and doing them with a certain kind of energy that's like, Maybe I'm not the best at writing essays, but this is what I got to do to get ahead and get the most out of what's offered. Well, I mean, I mean, you also um, mentioned uh, some artists that, um, you know, took a career off and they didn't go to college because they had that same drive. And I feel like if you put that drive towards a thing that you would like to do, which is the overall music section as opposed to school, um, are you are you concerned about like not having time? To in general, that's your concern. Straight I mean, if I'm, if I'm, you know, if I'm truly devoted to school, you know, I mean, not devoted to school, but like, if I'm going to school, 
the but, point is to kind of keep your grades up, you know what I'm saying, so you can stay in school and stay with the scholarships. Yeah. If I'm like gigging and like recording and all this 24 seven and like working, I feel like I'm gonna have to, one of them is gonna have to give, you know what I'm saying, it's either stop recording. I, yeah, and, I agree with you. Class. I mean, I, I agree with like, I, get, I agree with you, but I, agree, I get what you're saying, I guess what I'm trying to say. Because, so I know for like, when, so he, we own a, the jerky company, I guess, that you all know about, I don't know about that or not. Is he good jerky? So, yeah. for instance, he is, um, he works, you know, full time, whatever, but he, well, he'll be up until four or five in the morning. He'll get up at four in the morning sometimes and then just stay up until whatever, because he's doing other stuff. Yes, he takes a lot of time and energy. Um, but I think as far as school goes, like, with that, you can, if you really want to do it, there's networking groups you can join, um, even at school. And in Dallas in general, is a, I know, several networking groups, especially for uh, musicians, that um, you can join. That, yeah, you're gonna have to, but you're gonna have to like work, learn how to manage your time, I think is what I'm trying to say. Like, you can go to school and, like for instance, for me, I go to school full-time and I work full-time. So if I have to go to school from eight to whatever, and then I go to work from this time to this time, and then I make time to go see my, well, I don't like, I don't have like a, I'm not, I'm not a senior, I'm like, doing like that right now. But like time, same time, I had to make time for my other hobbies, or I made time for my friends, or I made time for my husband and my dog, or you know, just different things. Like you have to just learn how to, I think that's more of a time management thing. Cause you can make it work. I, I'm, that's, that's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm trying to say. I know like, I've watched when sit there and when he was getting his MBA, like he would go leave work, do, like, do his homework, or go to class, do his homework. And then on top of that, he would like, Come back home and then work on his business or his or he would stay up until whatever time DJing and you know recording his stuff because he had a recording some recording stuff which I can ask about for you. Um, but he you know he would stay up for hours doing that because he that's what he really wanted to do. He didn't want to be an intern to be honest. Like he doesn't still to this day. He's doing it and he likes it, but he doesn't that's not his like passion, I guess. So he's doing whatever it takes to get to where he has to be, if that makes sense. So it's I'm just trying to say like you can make it work. I know it's probably things that you don't have the time to do it, but you have time. You just gotta learn. You may not be able to sleep as much as you want to sleep, or you may not be able to see your friends as much as you want to see your friends, or do some like some other things. But you can. It will happen. It just may take a different kind of route to make it happen. I guess. Yeah, I think you're using. I think you're making excuses. Like you're not uh, the first person to try to balance a bunch of stuff. Well, and, and you said that he was juggling the job, school, and um, his, the recording at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he just have one job at this point, or was it? I mean, yeah, because well, he was in full time school. He had a he had graduated from school at this point, but still, even whenever he was at LSU, um, did the same thing. So you know what I mean? Like he worked went to school. I just think I think that you working for jobs personally, that's you say that like from my personal experience, like you saying you don't have time with school, with four jobs alone, like that's already a lot of time, right? So like. At least for me, it was. I don't know what jobs you have, but like for me, it was a lot of time. So like I, it was a lot for me to like. Okay, I can't really focus on other stuff. So I'm too busy trying to go to work. You know what I mean? Like, and then only oh, bringing oh, yeah. a quarter of what yeah. he would have with a degree. He's not bringing it. I already. I don't need to know. Like I know that he's not bringing in more money than me with his four jobs, and I'm working one. Yeah. He can't be. So it's yeah. like he's working so hard for like like crumbs. Yeah, I mean, and the difference um, I'd say would be uh, that I'm not, um, oh, with the jobs, with the time, you're saying um, the time being spent towards jobs versus being spent towards school. Um, I think the difference would be that, you know, when you get done with your job, I, you don't have to go home and do homework, you know what I'm saying? Or like study or like research stuff or like do papers, you know what I'm saying? And like, because that, that, that in a whole, you know, that in itself has a whole much more time added to it, you know what I'm saying? So like where you would spend, you know, say you got classes, what, uh, 12 to 2. I feel like, is that a good, is that, I feel like that's a good class. Yeah, time. I mean, depending on what you have, yeah. Say you got, you know, classes 12 to 2 or something, right? And then that class assigns a paper, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I guess theoretically you could, like, do it day by day. But if it's, like, a research paper, I don't know. I just feel like there's, like, there's a lot of, it's just, it's really that homework aspect, I'd say. I mean, I mean, I but I think part of that is time management again, but also part of that is like if you're in, if you find a degree in something that you are interested in, like for me, like I don't like home, don't get me wrong, I hate homework. Like I like, like legit hate it. However, I like the medical field, I guess. So 
some of my homework that I get like is like a, in, really interesting to me. So I actually don't mind. I actually enjoy doing it. And I'm learning from it, I guess. And I know it'll help me in the long run. So if you find something that can you are interested in or they can benefit you in your music career, then you might, I'm not saying all your classes will like that because they're not. But that's, that, again, that goes back to time management where you, you know, hey, I wake up at whatever time. So I, don't, I do this too. And I may study from five to six on this one subject. Okay, now I'm going to go to work. Or I'm going to go to class. And then I'm going to come back and do this. You know, so you just have to learn how to manage that time to where you're not doing your homework, writing a, a 15-page paper in one sitting after you've worked, you know, however many hours. Or you know, even if it's two days. You know, you just want to make sure you do like a little bit of increments so you don't have to worry about, oh, I have to devote six hours of time to my homework today when you probably could have done like an hour, maybe 30 minutes and been done. You know what I mean? Like, it's more about just learning how to, I, I just think it's more about time management, like as far as, and I think also learning something you're interested in or figure out something you're interested in to stimulate your mind, I guess, because some people, Maybe I don't know what kind of. I think for for you, it seems like you need something that's gonna keep you interested. And I don't, I don't see you, whatever you're doing before may not have been interesting to you. So if that's something interesting, you'll be more intrigued to actually like do it. Or maybe even even if you don't want to do it, like, I hate doing homework, but I still do it because I have to. But it's also I I don't know. I feel like it's I also learn from it. I guess I don't mind doing it either. It makes sense. So. I think it's more of a time management thing, personally. For us, what I personally think. I don't know what Joy, maybe not, but. <laughs> Only time management. I was in school and I was an associate editor of the paper over all the editors, running the whole newspaper. I had a radio show multiple times a week. I worked a job like shift work. I was a tutor here, then I had a job into the city where I made money because I paid all my utilities, all my groceries, and all my gas and insurance for my car. My mom did not after freshman year. So I had to have a job to bring in enough income to pay everything with the exception of my rent. So I was doing all of that. I had a popping ass social life. Okay, anyone will tell you, honey. Ass around Hampton, class of 2011. Like I, I was not not at the party. I was not at the birthday dinner. I was hosting stuff. I did all that while having those other obligations, having two other sources of making money. My grades were great. And then I spent all summer working my ass off, having no fun, not at a beach, not at a family vacation for me, doing an internship every summer where I made bigger bank, like real, a little more like real person money by working like a 10 week thing. I mean, everybody's doing this stuff. Like Quentin and Lorna are in a whole ass marriage, dude. And they're like, like he's, you know, they've got like, like multiple businesses. He has this full schedule. She has her full schedule. They have a giant dog in an apartment. That creates a lot, it needs a lot of attention. They own property. Like, hello, it's, everyone did it before you. Like, you're not an anomaly. And I'm not trying to say that to like, diss you in any way. I'm trying to show you like, mm. it, it's hard for everyone. But when you're so focused and excited about your future and you feel like you're worth it, I fought my way through to do all that stuff and to still have fun. But I worked really hard. I was gonna say like, and I mean, he, again, he's not here. He might be coming in the door in a second, but like, I know, because I honestly, God, like, I think like he, y'all are very similar in the way y'all think. My part, like, just talking to right now, I can see that. So I'm just like, I just feel like him talking to you about some, some stuff would be, you'd be like, okay, I, I mean, maybe not agree with it necessarily, but understand it maybe from coming from a different person, <laughs> I guess, more so, just because watching him like I even now again like I said like he'll be up because he's so excited about the business or and believe me I mean I own part of the business too but same time like this is his baby I guess so I'm not as excited you know I'm excited but you know so, so it's like it's different because the kids it's his thing so he wants everything to be about that so it's like he gets up and he's telling all this stuff and doing all these things about it and he's excited however he has to go to work and do all these things in between there but he just makes time for it so I think it's just more of a and again, he doesn't sleep. Like I have to make him go to bed sometimes or like make, hey, you know, we are married, let's have a date night, you know, different things like that. Like you have to just make time for different things. Yeah, you don't have time right now maybe, but I think you can find, you will find time for your, for your passion, you really will. I have a um, friend, he DJed my wedding and uh, we'll search Quentin's friend. He's a really big DJ in Louisiana. He was, uh, and he just graduated from, 
LSU. He's my, I think my age, but same thing. Like it took him all like years to graduate because, and that's a great, I was in business, I believe, but he owns, he owns his own, um, uh, company, I guess. He, oh, he like has other DJs under him. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, anyways, um, but my point is like, he did that because it was helping with his career too. Like he, he DJed his entire career through college. He did, and he's a big DJ now, and he like tours and stuff, whatever. Um, and he's becoming bigger and bigger, but it, his degree has helped him, I guess, but like make more out of that. Because when he's, when at some, I'm not saying at some point, and I don't, even if you're like 75 years old, you're gonna wanna have other um, resources, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, or like, like for instance, for me and Quentin, we have a business, we have real estate, we have you know, different things. You want to, someone told me this, to be successful, you have to have like several different avenues of uh, money. So you want to have multiple things. You don't want to just have like that one thing. Even, I, mean, I know you're working like four jobs, but I'm saying like multiple things are going to continue to bring you money. Not like an instant check, I guess, sometimes I say. Like things long like, term. like long term. yeah, long term, like investments, I guess. So I guess I'm just saying like you have to, and part of that going to school like has helped me learn more about that as well. Like he knows about that kind of stuff. I didn't know about all that kind of stuff until him. I mean, I know about some of it, but he schooled me on more of it, I guess. So I think just in general, I just like you'll you'll make time for your passion. But I really want him to to. I wish you would come here. I think it'd be help. <laughs> but you know, I don't know. Or, even even so, like, right now, I just feel like y'all would vibe more because y'all are like as far as like the artistry part, you know. Like he and he'll he'll sit there and tell you he didn't want to go to school. He hated it. He did, but he did it. And like now he has a very good career, you know, just different things. Does he necessarily like career? Not necessarily, but at the same time, he's not trying to be in a career forever either. He's just doing it for now because it's helping pay to get to where he wants to be. That's why he's doing it, to be honest. But, and even though he didn't like school, he liked school. Like he loved LSU. He's a, yeah. He loves the sports stuff. He has so many friends. From school, he didn't, he didn't like the school part, but he likes he, the experience. The experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's right. I, like, think that's an, I mean, while we're talking about education, like, of course, we all want to be educated and know as much as we want to know, but school is also like hella fun, and there's so many things you miss out on when, and it's like such a good time, I think, because of our societal standards. Everyone is doing the same thing around 18 to 23. Like, it's just a time where like whatever struggles you have, if you're sleepless, if you're eating ramen noodles, it's the one time in your life that everyone is doing the exact same thing and you can relate in the struggle. And then all the other times, it's, people are all over the place, right? There's never another moment I'm gonna have to relate to my peers. Yeah, yeah right, because the older you get. So over the place. Like, different. like our lives are different right now. Like, you know, we're in two different places. In life, I know. You're over there like the princess, the Duchess of Whale or whatever, whales or whatever, and I'm over here like hot girl summer. <laughs> Married my, up, boot up. Oh my god. My oh, point is uh, <laughs> you know, in different ways, like you know, experience in itself is a a big factor. I didn't have that. I had it for a good six to well, I had it for a nine month time. I went to school other places in the room, but it wasn't the same because I was working four jobs and I didn't make time for social life, I guess. If so I feel like you need so you need that interaction because you don't have it. Like Quentin is very he seems like he's an extrovert and like wants to be but don't get him he's very wants to be the house twenty four seven. But because of his experience, like he just wants to he loves being around like all his friends, like you know just different things. So it's like he wouldn't have that. He was he joined and he was in a fraternity. You don't have to join a fraternity by any means, but he was in one. It was an one academic one or whatever. I don't know, some business one. But either way it goes, he has all these friends that he's cool with now, and that they are diehard LSU people. Like I have learned to become an LSU person because I married him. So you know, hey, got to change. However, I there's things that like when I go to his like his events, whatever. I don't. I feel kind of like I should have been there and done that because. I don't have that experience. And they talk about all these amazing things they did. And it's like, that's cool. I wish I would have got to do that. And I'm 31. I'm like, you know, reminiscing like, and like, I want to be, I want to join some things now, but I have to wait till I graduate, you know, I can, and it's not going to be the same. I'm going to have the same experience. I'm going to have the, the grad version of that, which is cool too, but not the same because you don't have, you don't get to have the fun part or make the friends or make the, or 
for you is for music. Like you say you like you're one to um you need to see all these people, meet these people, and network. You can network at all kinds of different avenues though. Like in you know, if you're going to like in different like school, meet people, if, whether that be a teacher or whatever, and they can teach you how, or show you different people or bring I don't know. Quinn has met your classmates oh. themselves. You could just like meet these dope people and you're like you should be in our own band. Like, I've never been so inspired by an other pure, pure musicians than right now because I met this kid in my math class. Like, college is so good for that. And I feel like it's the only place that you're in between this perfect life, honestly, of in between being an adult and still being a kid. So you can still be dumb, do dumb stuff a little bit, like, you know, a little bit. Um, and have fun and everyone expects you to do that right everyone expects you to have parties and everyone expects you to do whatever and then but you're still being an adult and it's like the in-between point before you're fully an adult like Lauren is in school as a full adult so there's just some of the like fr frivility of it all she's just not gonna get uh, she would have she gets because she was in school and saw what it was like but just now she just can't have it because you can't just like, oh, now I'm in school now. I'm going to just stop all my responsibilities, not be mature anymore, and she can just go while out. Like, it's too late for that. You know, you have responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, I have a friend that, like, well, I mean, I'm 31, so everybody in my class will say older or younger, and I have, a, I have a classmate. She's 24, I believe. No kids, no nothing. So she legit just goes to school and parties her butt off. And, like, so she'll be like, hey, Lauren, like, you want to go – happy hour you want to go to whatever and sometimes I'm like, okay we'll go to happy hour and i'll go home she like wants to go to happy hour and stay out all night like on a tuesday and i'm like yeah i can't do that like i have to actually go to work or like you know go home to my husband or cook him dinner you know it's a different thing we can't do all that <laughs> you know just different stuff but it's just, it's just different i guess but i was going to say like as far as i i know for me it's joy saying from 18 to 23 i guess people are kind of in the same position yes and then older you get people are gonna they start asking questions I guess and then for me it started to bother me more I was like okay well can Aaron or not even that like you're just in two different head spaces like you're not gonna be able to relate to certain certain things either like I'm I was too worried about well I have to pay rent in my you know electric bill and make sure I have food in my house because instead of worrying about oh you know I'm gonna turn this paper in I'm gonna go meet my friends and we're gonna go to some like, I don't know, some coffee place, whatever, and do I don't know, whatever I was going to. And, and worry about that. You know, That's then, so old. You know, You're like, whatever the kids do, a coffee place. I have no idea what y'all do. I'm like, what are we doing? It's so old, dude. Go to hookah. I have no idea. Is that a thing? So, I go to hookah still, so maybe. <laughs> I was like, you know, just different things. Like, whatever you do, you, my point is, I was worried about like, I couldn't worry about those things. I was worried about other bigger things that I should not have had to worry about, I guess. Like my brother, he was beyond school in school when he started, but he um like he was worried about if his maid was gonna come clean his house apartment and then go party. Or I'm worried about like, am I gonna, you know, do I have any electric today? <laughs> like that's you know what I'm saying. Like I guess that was my that's my point. I'm I'm not saying you, that you have to spend all your time doing your homework. You don't have to do that. You, it's more. I think. I think it's more about the experience, and I don't know, just all of it in general. I think, like, yeah, you need to do your homework and you make time. But I also feel like you can find other avenues to get to where you want to be through through going to school. That's just what I. I don't know. Just from I just I regret not going earlier. I don't want to see other people like live what I've lived. You can ask Joy. Besides just like school in general, I've had other experiences I've gone through hell and back. And I don't want people to, you don't want to go through all like just other crap you don't have to, that wasn't necessary to go through, I guess. Just because it would be made like better. Like, yes. like, like you're going to, yeah, that's a good point. You're going to have tough stuff that happens to you. It's inevitable, right? But you don't need to go through every tough thing that could ever happen. You know, like you don't need to try to like, experience it all you want to ideally you know you're going to have a few things and those are going to be your life-changing affirming things but you should be able to watch me watch lauren watch your mom watch your classmates and learn through what they're going through you don't have to you shouldn't have to do a bunch of different stuff and have like a million heartbreaks i mean it's just like you want to give yourself as be as easy on yourself as you can and unfortunately part of that is just giving yourself the space to really mature and learn outside of 
edu the education part, right? Just like become your person without all the pressure of it. And that four years is a place where you can make certain mistakes and do certain things. And it's a lot easier to bounce back from them than if you're making those same mistakes later on. I also think that you want to remember, I don't know, I feel like I just legit lost my entire train of thought. But <laughs> um, I was just trying to say like, I don't, I, when you're in school, is is just is different, I guess. I know for me, watching other everybody else, like we, they would come home and I don't know, it's just, it's just it's, it was not the same, I guess. Like you said, like you said, I legit lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> See, she's old, JB. She trying what to learn. Did you, what did you just say though? What, 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 what you just said. So what did you just say? That's, that's what you, I was like playing off the word. Just yeah. saying, telling him like he doesn't need to go through unnecessary experiences. He can yes, learn in other ways. Okay. There you go. All right. So my, um, what I was saying, like for me, whenever you, I'm not, like for me, school has like, I guess felt saved, not saved me necessarily, but it's made a difference in my life because I made myself go through, I met all these people I probably should have met or, which is, that's whatever. <laughs> but, um, oh, I know, but, but that's besides the point, my point is that like, I, was I put myself in situations, I guess, that I didn't have to put myself in, I guess. So my point, like, to the point where I worked my butt off all these, all these jobs and I, and then I still didn't have certain resources, I guess, or um, something, things happened to me that I could have avoided or maybe not avoided, but either way, things are going to happen, like she said. It's just a matter of when you don't have a support system through your friends or, even your, I don't know, your, your family supports you, which is good, but not everybody's family does that. So my family did, don't get me wrong, but different levels of support and even the best people can't offer all the support. Some, exactly. So it's like, you don't have that, then it kind of, it just makes everything a lot harder than it would it has to be. If that makes sense. Like you just need it to, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about anymore, but. <laughs> oh, you're making um, No, that like, makes sense. Like, as far as like, you don't want it to be, you don't want to, you still want to put yourself out there to where you're making everything so hard on you and it doesn't have to be that hard. Like, it really doesn't have to be hard at all, to be honest. Like, you can, you could just, I don't know. I feel like you're making your life harder, in my opinion, like right now, you, than it needs to be at this moment. Like, you, you know. You could be having and, so much fun right now. I yeah, want you to have fun. Actually, and I feel like you, you probably are having fun, but I feel like you'd be having a different kind of fun, if that makes sense. Like, instead of just, working and then going to your gigs and stuff is awesome, but like you want to be able to do other stuff outside of that. Like in, to, to put yourself in a position where you can level up, I guess, to a different level, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know if that makes sense at all. But I think you need to find a school, you need to figure out what you want in a school environment and what would be like that good combination for you. And then let that be your goal. I think you're a person, while the community college option is so smart, statistically people who come from community colleges make better grades or more successful with graduation like all the stats show that that transition is really key to people's success in a lot of cases and if that's not something that's going to motivate you that doesn't have enough passion for you right now you need to go straight into a university that has that culture that environment right like that's not community college is not for everybody just like all these other things aren't for everybody but if you can hate it from, it's hmm? not i said for me i hate it like you said like you felt like you're, it will, you, you saw part of things that people are going to go through. Yeah, you do, but I feel like you go to the actual university, it's a whole different experience. I, for me, I went to a university and then I went to a community college and I regretted going that way. I should have like stayed at, you know, university for women because it's not the same. Like, in community college, you see a, a wide variety of different things in general. You're going to see people who are 95 years old to 18, you know, and and it's not the same kind of experience at all. Like you don't, you're not going to have different clubs or different, different things you can join or, I don't know, just, just, you don't have all that. You have to experience. You don't have There's it. a lot of community. Huh? The, the community college lacks community. <laughs> it's an honesty. I think for you, you may, and I was just like, don't give up just because you didn't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Look at different options, I guess. Don't give up because you don't get into one or you don't get the scholarship you want. Like, it's okay. Like, there's different things. And I can give you a link to what my advisor gave me, like, where it's, I, I think I applied, like, one 
and like they're on the website no matter like for a year's worth of time whatever so if, if something comes up they have all your information so it's like the essay part you don't like to do you only have to do it one time and all these people look at your one thing so that way okay well this person got this scholarship i didn't get that scholarship but i might get the next one that comes up on that website makes sense they look at all they look at your stuff so that way you don't have to keep writing the same thing over because i get it you don't want to i don't want to do that either <laughs> so i can do that to you if you want it but yeah, you know that yeah I was like, I, I, I'll email it to you. I'll forward my email. You didn't have that when we were in high school. What? I know. I, I was like, what? That's a new one. That yeah, is like, I've seen one. But I'm just saying, I think you need to find a school or, and continue looking at different schools, I guess, until you find a right fit. Don't just give up because, oh, I didn't get into this one school because I did that. And then it didn't go very well for me. So, like, you know, I just, I feel like you got to keep going. There's different ways. In different schools for everybody. Like the first school I went to, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I loved it to death. It was bad. Um, however, it was not the right time for me to go to that school. <laughs> so, you know, like I should have gone somewhere differently, I guess. So this, I don't think community college, personally, I don't think community college is good for you because the way you just, how you were talking about it, I just don't think it's the right fit for you. It's for some people, like like Joy said, it does statistically say a lot more things about people when they graduate. But like, I just feel like I don't think that's your what you need. I think you need like a university that's going to get you to where you need to be, or have a good music program, or or whatever it is you want to join. You know what I mean, like, I just don't think that you're going to see that experience, especially out here. No offense to the community college out here; they all are the same. I've been to them. So it's like been to all of them, yeah. they're, they're all the same. So uh, <laughs> this is not a very good indication of how they should go. I've been to other community co colleges and I'm like that's not how it is in Dallas. Like Air Force, that's not how it works. So like, if you want to go to community college school, that's fine, but don't go here. Don't go out here. I'll go elsewhere. My personal. But also, thing. like, who's gonna travel to go to community college? Like, you're gonna move to California, go to community college. It's a little bit. Hey, hey, people go to uh, Navarro for cheerleading. Okay, but that has another purpose. <laughs> I'm just saying. Cheer, cheer John. <laughs> yeah, no, I think if you find the right fit, this will yeah. all make sense to you. If you find the right fit, you'll have, like, I can see you. I mean, I'm biased. So I can see you at HBCU with your peeps. Um, and I can see, like, in the band, like, those bands, they love school more than anybody. Everybody in the bands that are, like, traveling around and doing all that. Um, you know, the friend groups you make, the different interests you find that you have, and then there's little clubs or, like, you want to be, like, a student leader or something like that. I don't know. You could have – I don't know if you, what sports you still play. You could do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think you need to find the right combination, and all of this won't seem so daunting. And I think that's what happened for me is that I found, like, such a good fit for me. Even when things were really tough, it was, like, I was so sure of my decision and so sure that this place was a perfect home for me during these four years of like critical maturation critical <laughs> have you ever been to um i'm not saying go to lsu because clinton went there by any means but i'm asking this because i have a lot of like i know well we know a lot of different music people out there have you been have you ever been to a school in general and visited before uh in louisiana mm -hmm. uh yeah i visited shreveport i visited a centenary because um i don't know lsu like they they're just they're the band, like she's the band in general, but like I, their engagement with in general, well, everybody is just amazing to me. When I was going to visit, even a and the same way, or any big school, right? But like, for some reason, LSU is not an HBCU by any means. There's the community for black people is awesome, but also you have other, you don't want to be, I mean, you have other races as well. It's very diverse, but I just, I don't, even if you don't want to go there, I would say if you ever want to go like visit whenever we, we go there a lot. If you want to like just come come with us one time, you can so you can see. It's just how it would be because like we go there quite a bit to be honest, probably more than we should. Um, just so you can kind of look at it in, as a whole, not just school, but like if you look at the school, awesome. But like if you want to, just in general, how things could could be, I guess, instead of like at a community college. Because does that make sense? Like, is, I don't know if, if you want to do that, you can because we go there a lot. Obviously, not right now because we're in the pandemic, so we're not going anytime soon. However. Um, when this is over, just because I feel like if you see, if you can see certain stuff, then you maybe me feel differently. And so you don't have to go to that school, but you can just see how things could be in a different setting. Like it's different than just. And I'm sure you visited schools all over. I'm sure you did. But I'm just saying, like, it's different too when you go with um, outside of like you know your parents or like your 
I don't know, whoever took you, your counselor, you know, whoever. This is different when everybody gets you. Yeah, and leaving the state is really, like, mm -hmm. I'm really pushing that and suggesting that. Um, Cheryl probably will backhand me no, when I'm I speak. Sorry, I'm like, I'm I'm Cheryl's going into the room like, Joy, we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> the, experience, the experience of meeting people from a place you've never been to before, like rolling up to school and being like, this person's from Nebraska. Have you even met somebody from Nebraska? And it's bl a black person that, you know, those were all my experiences. Like, I've never been to Tacoma, Washington at this point. You know, like, I, you just, your world is not, right, random places, but you learn so much from those people with those different backgrounds, people coming from the Caribbean, people coming from, you know, Europe and all these other places. I mean, that part of it and that access to have a bit of their world and then make friends with them and then you get to go home with them on like Easter and like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And Christy did that. She utilized that at Hampton because we lived in Denton and Hampton's so far away. She got to go home with all her friends who lived in all these other Northeastern states and experience their cultures and their families and what is normal for them. Like the DFW is a DFW. Nothing else yeah. is like this. And no one else is probably really going to be able to understand this. So having access and then sharing, you represent your area, right? Like, it's dope. And be like, this is my friend. He's from Chicago. My other friend's from New York. And we're coming together. Lifelong friendships. Like, I watched Quentin and his friends. They have been friends all through college. Most, and they, and they have a, Joy's met some of them. But, like, he has a, and you, she only met, like, a portion of them. But, like, there's a ton of them. They're all been friends since college, whatever. Also, some of them business from high school, whatever. Either way it goes. They, like, it's a lifelong thing that he has on there. So, like, I watch him when he's with his friends. And I'm just like, okay, I don't have that because I don't, I didn't get that experience. I have my friends that I've met here. I'm not from here. You know, but, like, it's not the same, I guess. Like, they have a different kind of bond and friendship and like they have I don't know I just watching them they get together for every single thing like we went down there just uh, well for the national championship they what they all got together but um that was different that was a whole different experience itself too but like just watching how they all interact and how they just how they are it's just and they, you're not gonna be friends with everybody don't get me wrong you're not you're gonna lose friends along the way however it's just the experience in general I feel like like I mean hell I got married and half my friends at my wedding and my friends anymore so that says a lot just saying but like I mean, I mean, like, as the older you get, you just lose friends. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. yeah, the experience, though, in itself is just, like, watching them, I'm like, that's cool. I wish I had that because I didn't, I didn't get that. I made friends in college, yes, and I have, I mean, I'm friends with one of them still. But, like, I wasn't there long enough to, like, enjoy all that that he enjoys. So I'm saying, so if you ever want to experience that, we, I will, we can show you here or when we go down there. Because he has people, they come here a lot, too. John, honestly, we can go anywhere you want to go. Yeah, it doesn't have to be LSU. I'll just give you I'll just give him that as an example. I feel so strongly about you going to school. I will drive you, fly you where you need to go. Let's go. I've always wanted to go to the famous LSU. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> come on. Lauren has a caravan now. No, no, let me just warn you. Uh... It is a different experience when you get down there. Lots. How old are you, John? I'm 19. Okay. Well. Because <laughs> it's part of alumni relations. They party, they tailgate. Yeah, like. I was like, you're about to see it's a different kind of world. However, we mean, but it's, 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 a, it's a cool experience, even if, you, if you're 19. Like, it's, regardless, it's, it's really cool to see, like, how they all interact. And in, it's a, not just at LSU, but ever, all, other schools, too. But there, I just noticed how... Like a and my parents with a and is different at a and It's like, don't, they'll kill me. It's a cult. But I think. They just, they just do different things there like, than how they do at LSU. is more like laid back and chill. And like everybody just, they love everybody there. It's weird. Like it's not weird, but it's just different. So that's why I say if you experience maybe that or somewhere else, you can just kind of see how it is. But yes, we can all go as a group if you would like. We're, I know we're going for the, well, again, depending on how this, is, how this all goes, for the, um, homecoming game this year so y'all are more than welcome to come with us for that or we'll probably go for that too but <laughs> just letting y'all know yeah you just i don't know you gotta i i would have paid the hundred grand i think i came out with about close to 100 grand at the end of the day for hampton if there was no education or degree at the end just for the experience yeah. just for the, a social experience i'm dead serious 
and I got to pay a quarter of that back or well, more than that. Shoot. I'm really, I'm paying a hundred grand now and I don't have that experience at all. So. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, but also, like you said, back then, understanding how scholarships work and mm -hmm. how to find them and the internet being a place that wasn't used as much as it is now, honestly, like my college admissions essay was written on a floppy disk. I mean, and even though even SATs were different, remember, like this is this is different. Spend, everything's different now. Things you have you have the internet for everything. Like the website she gave me, I was like, this is not. I've never knew about this at all. All right, I mean, just all, all kind of different things I could give you, just to be honest. So, but I didn't know about any of them until I until I had to go back because I had I had to figure it out. <laughs> so, I don't know. And you get the equipment you need. Like that's part of it, depending on how st strategic you are with the programs. I've gotten so much cameras and like those giant hard drives that are 130 bucks. For laptops, they give people a laptop all the time. It, well, at certain schools, I know they give you a laptop. Yeah. Like, and then, then and then your money you get, scholarship money or your financial aid money, whatever that you get, you can use that towards your recording equipment. And that's a good, that's a good way to use financially, wouldn't you say? Because like, let's say he has a scholarship and his books and those that type of things are paid for, but he gets a little extra for some reason, which a lot of people do. You get a little check every semester and it, let's say it's just a few thousand dollars, but you can decide, I want to invest in this two grand for this really important equipment that wasn't covered, but I want it. That's a good investment of a loan. Because you can also use it long term. I know, like for me, the first time I ever got a my financial aid check, I, I mean, I was getting working, so I waited for rent. But like, you don't have to do that. <laughs> you don't need to. I mean, if you have to, you're awesome. But like, not clearly don't do that. Use it for, like I said, some equipment or something else to upgrade your, uh, I don't know, your computer. I don't know, whatever else you like. Some people study abroad with it. System, because like, I know, like Quinn has like this different. Um, on his Mac that he uses for recording and for DJing too, like well, for both, but uh, but it's like a whole different system you have to have, like, and it costs money for that. So, you know what I mean? So, you can use it for that stuff because you're, you're gonna need it anyways. So, you can do it for anything. You're gonna get the money back. I mean, yeah, you probably have to pay part of that, yes. However, that's a good it's, it's, it's a good investment though. So you're investing in yourself. So, instead of investing in, like, I don't know, I'm gonna go party it away or buy some whatever that you're never gonna like you're gonna use for a couple of years who cares like you know what i mean like that one <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you i did that so that's what i'm saying like my I, grad school I, refund check i couldn't tell you where it went <laughs> yeah, no. i wish i would have got like something that would made you know made a difference in my life but you know i didn't there was a lot of books yeah. <laughs> like yeah but so that's about it so that's, that's, I guess that's just my, my thing. Like there's other ways. I know that you're worried about time and that you're worried about like other things, but there's other ways to get there. And again, when he uh, finally, when it, maybe not today, but whenever you want to talk to him, he's available to talk to as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the only difference I could say, man, is, is, is the consistent drive, yo. Consistent drive. Um, and I mean, you said to yourself, I mean, there are artists that have made it without taking the school route uh, with the drive. And the thing is, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess like the school route is like a safe, is like a good safety net. I think, I mean, I, I think that's kind of the overall, the common denominator is that it's, it's a nice safety net. You can fall back on it. You know what I'm saying? If things don't go the way you want it. Boom. I still got a degree. I can still get a job. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I'll, and I definitely know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not going to go to school because I definitely do see school in my future. And I think right now, honestly, if I were to go to school, it would be like, um, I know there are a lot of production schools out, like we were talking about pool cell, and like just schools that'll, you know, boost me in the area that I want to be boosted in. Um, but as far as like the overall college experience, um, uh, and go, I mean, and going into debt for it. We didn't say that. I, you cannot factor that in. Can't Nobody factor that in. That you. you said what? Nobody has said that to you. You have, you can go to school for free if you wanted to. So I want you to be, I think the issue is that I'm finding in these conversations with you that I don't think you're really being truly honest with yourself. I think you're more interested in being stubborn about it and proving your point. Cause you, I, Elaborate. I you Elaborate. argue about plenty of stuff. You're your Elaborate. dad's child. He is like a d master debater. I mean, I know it's in your blood. It's in the Barton blood too. Like you will all stand firmly and be like, no, no. I feel you on that. And also, you I promise you, JB, you don't know what you don't know. 
you don't know everything right now. I don't, yeah. You, yeah, don't, yeah. you actually yeah. don't know anything. And I'm saying that as a person who is just learning the literal basics of life and being like, oh, really? Oh, wow. I also don't think the common denominator necessarily is it's a it's gonna fall back on. I also think it could be more of like just a stepping stone in your career. Because like like I was saying, you have to have multiple. You want to have if you want to be very successful, you need to have multiple ways of getting money. So if that means you have to have a degree in whatever to help you get to where you need to be and have. I don't know, have a, have a recording studio and own all these, or, or have your own label and like have a, you know, whatever under you. To get to a different level, I feel like, I think it just helps in general. I'm not saying that it's something to fall back on, so it's something you can just use in general. Like, I don't know. You can, you can be, you can just be an artist and be fine. I'm not saying that, but I just think it'll also help elevate your career to a different level, as well, was my, was my thing anyways. And you're, just, uh, you're wait, I want to go back to Joy. What you were saying that um, uh, I'm not being honest with myself. Uh, like the stubborn deal. Yeah, like like elaborate. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, I just like, think like you have your mind made up, and you have such a you do have a passion in what you do. That's clear. Obviously, no one's doubting that. And I just know where you come from. Are, have you met your mom ever? Like someone just sticking to their guns and literally <laughs> like. I mean, this is just the type of people that we are. And so I think it's easier to say, like, I'm just going to prove everyone wrong because I'm not trying to backtrack now. I'm so far gone of like this. I've been saying this argument for months and months now. Mm -hmm. It just is, I think you're trying to push against it. And the thing is, we're all telling you this because you deserve to have a dope college experience. Lauren deserved to have that. And so, you know what I'm, it's just like, it's just something that it's a gift you give yourself, huh? And I just, not even that. You just want to, you just want to make yourself go through some crap that you don't need to go through. To be honest, like that too. You, know, you want the experience, yes. Obviously, oh, yeah, I want that. You have more of that than anything. But I'm saying, like, you don't also don't want to go through just crap. Like, you don't want to do that. Like, I don't know. Just make it easier for yourself. It's one yeah, way I, that life goes a little bit easier. Just do it. It's like yeah. if you brush your teeth. You cannot brush your teeth. There's other people in our family as well that did not finish their degree, and this is fine, who are struggling more so than they need to be as well. That makes sense? Like, not necessarily struggling, but like, they're making things harder for them as well. Like, I mean, they have family, and they're still doing, you know what I mean? Like, they, and they could have been doing a lot more than they're, what they're doing. So I just feel like it's not necessarily for something to fall back on or it's just more of to help elevate you, to help you get down, to help you network, to, just all kinds of different avenues you can do with it. Your experience, the networking part of it, the, you just, you get more out of it than just, oh, I'm going to go to school just to go to school. Like, you know what I mean? Or don't, and don't get me wrong. I was, I was very stubborn. Like I was like, okay, you know, I'm not, I didn't go to school. So, and I'm just not going to go anymore. You know, whatever it was. But at the same time, time, like I'm the kind of person, like if I, and I will prove people wrong to, like my ask Quentin, I'm like, you know what? You know, I'm gonna, I'm making a point of this. Like, you know, I mean, that's just how I am. So, I get, well, I get it. But at the same time, like, you don't. Sometimes you have to just let it be and be like, you know what? There's more to it than, than that. Like, you can't just be like, I'm not gonna. And it makes sense. Like, you can't be stubborn all the time. And, and I, well, and I feel like the the big difference between like why um, I'm not being stubborn because I mean, I like I see what you're saying. How I could. Like not be honest it's with myself. Coming off as it, it's yeah, coming. I, I feel like I, feel like, I, feel like I, I, I can see how like I'm coming off as like stubborn and all that. But I think the difference is is that like you know between like being stubborn and just like okay I'm gonna do this you know because everybody's telling me I should so and I've been you know so deep in this you know I've been deep in this mindset I'm just gonna keep it going. I think the difference between having doing being that and then like um, not being stubborn is is I feel like I I have a plan. I feel like I have a, like an a actual plan. I do have like a goal. You know what I'm saying there, and I do feel like I I have steps to get to where I'm trying to go, and I feel like I am following those steps. Um, I'm not just kind of like, you know, uh, messing around and just working. You know, just not going to school just cause. Like, I feel like I do actually have like a sort of um, a setup, uh, sort of like a yeah, like steps. I, I feel like I have steps I'm taking, and um, you know, and I and yeah, I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not just kind of like uh, uh, lollygagging. You know, I'm not just kind of like chilling, you know, I, 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 there is something I'm working towards. Um, and I actually am, I feel doing it in a very efficient way. Um, 
I can always be more efficient, but um, I kind of, and I, I know another thing you're, you're mentioning was that like, you know, you can find yourself in college and mature and stuff. Personally, like, I feel like, and you're, you're probably not gonna agree with it, but I feel like I found myself and I feel like I, I know who I am. And um, I, I feel like at this point, I know what I wanna kind of devote my energy towards. And I feel like I'd rather struggle and become, you know, um, uh, an artist, you know, like an artist, and, and that branches out to other things once you start getting credibility, you know, once you start getting hits on the radio and like, you know, hit collabs and stuff and start getting other things. I feel like from there, other things will obviously branch out and you're giving more opportunities. Um, but I think, I mean, I, I feel like I've kind of geared myself towards this and I know I'm going to be struggling. There's going to be a point where I'm probably not going to, you know, be living. But I mean, and honestly, maybe not because. I'm very blessed with the support that I have here. And I mean, my mom's cool. As long as I'm working, you know what I'm saying? Making my own, you know, making my own money and saving it up and not just spending it. Cause I'm not spending on, I know you're also saying, you know, uh, that money could be going towards, you know, your uh, college, it's good to spend that money towards college cause you're investing in yourself, right? And so you're not just like throwing it away on like clothes or like, you know, irrelevant items. And the, and the difference is I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I don't buy clothes. And if I do, I go thrifting like spend 15 bucks, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saving money and putting it towards like stuff that is, you know, going to help me in my future and what I want to do. Um, I do think that stuff like a production license and like uh, learning how to produce and like an engineering license in that music field, I think that um, would be very beneficial. Uh, but I do feel at this point, just based on my experience um, and the things that I've done in life, and I feel like y'all don't think I've done a lot, but I feel like I've I feel like I've gone through a lot, um, not as much as like, say, a different, a person in a different, completely, a completely different circumstance, but I feel like the essential things that you um, get out of college, minus the whole independence section of it, um, simply because I can't be independent, right, from mom's well, here, but I feel like all the other social aspects along with that, I feel like I've gotten enough of, um, and I do feel like I'm just ready to focus on what it is I'm trying to do. And um, yeah, but I, yeah, this is not, yeah, but I like, I'm taking everything you guys are saying to heart and like school is definitely in my brain. And um, I think some form of education will be coming very soon. Um, I want you to like, I and actually just hope this for you. I hope you're the exact same person you are right now when yeah. you're our age, because yeah. if you're not, you're going to be in a crap load of trouble. Yeah, real talk. Real no, time. because you change, your interests change, your skill sets change. Yeah. I couldn't even, I mean, the stuff that I really wanted to do, it just wasn't feasible. The economy changed, like a lot of that stuff that I was interested in and really good at then, it's just not some, it's not the direction I'm going today. Well, and yeah, I, you just change in general. There's things that I didn't, you just change. Yeah. And I didn't, I'm not doing it now either, but I was going to say, if you, do you have like a, as far as you say you have a plan, what, is it like how big is your plan? Like is it like a year plan? Is it like a five? I just, I just want to know. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's funny because my, my mom like literally she like, <laughs> she'll be like, JB, you need to write a paper, explain yeah. your, you know, steps, your plans, how are you going to get to where you're trying to go? And that's, I mean, that's very good. That's very beneficial and that's very smart. Um, and so, I mean, uh, so like I said, kind of going earlier, um, right now I've, I've been blessed to be able to, um, work with this producer in Fort Worth. Um, I was performing a show, it was me and my drummer, and a producer in the crowd, a guy named Ty Macklin. He's actually worked with people like Erica Badu and um, India Ari. He was actually um, one of the producers on Erica Badu's like breakout album, uh, breakout album, um, Baduism. Um, he's helped people like India Ari, and there's a guy on uh, named Tony Evans that's working with like Kanye right now, and he has like tracks with him and stuff. Anyway, he's, he's pretty successful. Um, and he saw me at the show, he saw my performance, and he was like, yo, um, I really dig your sound, um, and I want to produce your whole album for free. He started, like, out and, like, completely blessed from God. Um, and it kind of started from there, like, encouraging me, like, that I, like, it was kind of big encouragement, um, you know, that was kind of, like, going in the right direction of just kind of, like, really hashing this thing out. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, I, I got, I've been blessed to work with him, and, um, and, uh, Oh yeah, so yeah, I'm working on um, releasing music at that point. So I mean, at, yeah, so at this point it's really, I've taken five years, I've gotten the, um, you know, five years I've had a band, I've been playing shows everywhere. So I've gotten the stage presence thing down, I've gotten the performance aspect down. I know how to work with different, you know, people, um, you know, that's happened my whole life, you know, being in different shows and stuff. 
Um, I know how to talk and, and network and, and connect with uh, the people that do the tech side of the deal um, during those shows. Um, literally, I met one of the tech guys. I was doing a gig like maybe a month or two ago. So we threw away the app now, but like we were talking back and forth because he, like we, we hit it off a thing and then we were talking about like my amp. I was messed up. And basically like he was just, he was about to like, you know, help me fix my app, but then we just decided nah. Anyway, what I'm saying is I learned how to network in there and communicate with people um, in different spaces like that. And um, so I've been doing this thing for five years, right? So I've gotten a whole bunch of experience there in the live performance section um, and area, right? So now it's time for the content, right? Because we all, shows are one thing, but if you don't have any content that you're pushing out, then you're not really going to go anywhere. Because um, there's nothing for people to follow. There's nothing for your fan base to follow. Right, so now it's time to focus really on getting content out. And then I can start doing real shows and start, because now I have something to push. You know what I'm saying? Now it's not like, I'm just playing these songs that you're probably never gonna hear again. It's like, no, we have some stuff that's gonna be out that you can jam to, tell your friends about, yada, 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 right? whoop de woo right? And then now you have a fan base, they're listening to it. Um, I guess, hold on. So, okay, so now it's time for the content, right? Putting out the content. Um, I'm working with Ty on an album, um, dropping two mixtapes for my solo self, for my solo self, for myself um, this year. Um, and then I'm working on about three other collab projects with three other artists um, that should be released this year or next year. Um, the album should be released either this year or next year, probably next year because whole coronavirus thing, it's got the business shut down, the uh, studio for shut down. But um, yeah. Uh, so now it's time to really release content and working on a social media presence and uh, getting more followers that way, uh, whether it be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, yeah, yeah, it's the whole marketing deal. You, you know about that, Joy, you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I guess I do. And boom, resource right it. there. You get what I'm saying? Resource. Like, you never ask me. But that's on the way. That's on, I'm, but that's on the way, though. I, 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 I need something to market. <laughs> I need something to market first, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so yeah, so it's really just working on the content. Once I get those content out, um, I start pushing that really heavy. Um, from there, followers regain. Um, and it's kind of just works. I mean, the, the more you put out and the more you promote the stuff you put out, um, the more people will start to listen and the more people um, just kind of, yeah, start following you. Um, and from there, you start to build um, a sort of presence, not over, like, uh, a voice, I'm gonna say, you get know what I'm saying? Like a, you yeah. know, like a fan base, we basically. Yeah. We yeah. follow yeah. people too. <laughs> so what? We get it. We follow people too. We're consumers. We engage. We're an audience. We get it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then from there, you can start booking more shows. Um, and then I also have other people that have been doing this longer than me that I'm in contact with that have, you know, a way larger fan base than I do. I, I play with this one artist named Tippy Ballady. She was, uh, she wasn't a final, she had a gold ticket on American Idol. What was it? What did she do? She got a golden ticket on like American Auto or something. Anyway, she's like, she, she has a very big following at this current point. Um, she has songs on the radio in different states. Um, I have another person I play for, uh, Demoy Janae. She's been in this thing for a fat minute. She just released her third album. She has songs on the radio like internationally. <laughs> um, I mean, and just several other, you know, friends like that who know people. You guys know who Adam Blackstone is? I know the name. Oh. I've heard it name before. I don't know who it is. Did you ever see the show Rhythm and Flow? Oh, yeah. That was, that was from down there. Uh, well, so basically, like, Adam Blackstone is a musician, and he has a band, and um, there was this one competition uh, during the uh, Rhythm and Flow thing, and where the, the contestants had to perform with the live band, and the live band that was the house band the whole deal was the Adam Blackstone band. Mm -hmm. Adam Blackstone is the cousin of one of my really good friends, um, Troy, who's also a phenomenal drummer. Um, I mean, so it's just little stuff like that, just small world and stuff. I mean, in, in Deep Ellum, you know, you see people all the time, like RC and like Cleon, and there's people who are playing for people like Erica and these big names. Um, the other day, I, I don't know if you know who Sean Martin is, but I just talked to him, I got his contact information. Um, and he's played with people like Snarky Puppy and, and Erica and several other artists. Um, and so, I mean, it's just like, all these resources, I just need a following, I just need content out. I mean, and then I already know the right people and I'm only gonna meet more right people. Um, I have a lot of connects up at House of Blues because I did this uh, project, I mean, I did this um, this camp, what was it? It was like a, I did it for two years. It was like a, yeah, a program um, where basically you, 
went in there with your live band. I mean, you went in there with your band, or if you're a solo artist, when, you know, as a solo artist, and you, uh, you basically studied, um, like you, it was like, it was almost like a, I don't know, I'm not gonna say internship. It was, it was like a, yeah, mentorship. Basically, it's kind of, they would, what they would do is they would get like, every week you guys would watch a seminar. Um, and basically it's like, they got three very successful people in the business and um, it'd be live streamed to all of the programs that were associated with that, with that specific, it's called Move, the Moving Forward program, um, uh, bringing down the house and um, all of the, they had different, you know, programs nationally. So they would, you know, bring in artists um, to one place, live stream into all of the programs. And it's just like three successful people. And basically you can, you literally write questions and you get to submit them. And if your question is chosen, you get to ask the question to a successful person and they'll tell you their answer about, you know, basically just how they, you know, how they came up in the music business or what they did or steps they took um, to become successful and things like that. And basically just through this program, I've, you know, met a lot of, uh, people at the um, House of Blues. That's how I got there. You know, that's how I got to wrangle Lion Babe and talk to their people. So I mean, it's just, I have like, I have the resources and I'm only gonna get more. And um, yeah, it really is about this point, just dropping content. Once I do that, get the fan base from there, start booking shows. From there, get your name out more, start booking more shows. From there, start, you know, putting out more music. Um, and throughout this time, you know what I'm saying? Throughout doing all this musical stuff, I'm also working over here, building up you know, cash this way. I'm also, we're also working on it. Like we have a YouTube channel right now, me and my mother, um, it's for me. Okay. She's kind of spearheading it, um, praise the Lord. And you know, that's gonna start kicking off because you know, once people start following you, they're gonna see more, they want, they're gonna wanna see more of you. And so now they're looking at the YouTube deal, right? And now you can get paid for YouTube, you know what I'm saying? So like now I'm bringing in money that way, you know what I'm saying? And then, I don't know, there's, there's several other, um, avenues that'll be open and stuff and that's kind of like I'm, I'm I kind of took you through like the process of where I'm at right now and then like where I'm trying to go with that process okay, elevator pitch I'm an exec you're in the elevator with me you have 10 maybe 15 seconds go how you doing I'm John Aqua I have stuff out on SoundCloud right now <laughs> I mean right now that's how I can do it <laughs> that's it I was gonna say like have you as far as the timeline, that's what I'm saying. I need, I need, I can't even pitch nobody. Executive, right? Exactly all I can do in the elevator, literally, all I can do in the elevator, perfect. all I can do in the elevator is be like, um, "Hi, how you doing? Um, my stage name is John Aqua. Um, I'm working on music at this current moment. I'm getting stuff out. I'm working with a producer. I'm Macklin. Um, he's working people like Eric Badu. He'll probably be like, "Oh, I know." Why are you talking to me? I'm going to a meeting. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't talk to you actually. Like, I, I promise you, I wouldn't be talking because I don't have content out at this current moment in time. I would not have. I would not talk to you if you were here. I'd be like, okay. What is your like weirdest timeline down as far as like uh, what you're gonna do like the next within this year? Like, as far as like you know, about this point in the year, I'm gonna have this done or this much content done or you know what I mean? Yeah. And keep like going that way. And then what you're going to do after you get the content done, and then as far as what you're going to do after, even after you, you've got a big fan base, like by year, by a month, how are you going to do that? Well, you can kind of see. And then maybe you want also, with you doing that and with school in there, like you do that with, with one with you and your job and with, uh, with like your timeline as far as um, getting content out, I guess. And then one with, with doing the same thing but with the school in there as well. And see, it makes sense. You can compare them and see what you can do. Make sense? Well, that wait, 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 wait. You said, wait, one more time, like, say it again. Like, so. like make a timeline as far as, like, what you're going to do the next six months as far as, like, where you, how much content you're going to get out in the next six months or the next year. Or, well, in I, next, I, I, and then, like, huh? Well, I'm saying, like, and I ask, um, you mean as far as specific dates? Like, and things yeah. like that? Okay, bet. Because I've done that with, um, with one of the projects so far. The rest were kind of just, like, vaguely this year. Um, but yeah, that, that is something I have been, you know, looking into like, yo, we need to really establish dates. The thing is with that though, and that's why I'm saying like with my personal stuff, because I don't have a laptop and means to do it myself, right? I do have to rely on my friends for that sort of deal. Um, the people that I'm working with. Um, so it's kind of like, I try to get fit in when I can get fit in. Um, as far as our projects, like me and their collab projects, we have dates and stuff. Like I told you on the April 1st date and the May 1st date. Um, Another kid we're still working with, um, we're, we're still uh, getting all those uh, songs together and put into like a mixtape form and single form. We'll be working on dates with that. 
Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah, those, those, like a timeline is, is very, yeah, that's, that would be very smart. Yeah, if you don't like, necessarily hit that exact date, it just kind of gives you like a, what's to look at, you know what I mean? So you can kind of see, I have, you know, a month left before I need to have this done. Even if you don't hit that exact date, but that can even also go with, with school too. Like you can have one with you doing your content and what's in school as well. So you just kind of see like, it also help, help with time management in both aspects. Like if you, if you don't decide to go, like you have, you still learn how to, you know what I mean? You kind of have like a timeline to help you. But I mean, I would do it not just within the year, like maybe the next couple of years. Cause you said you want to do like the fan base and stuff too, right? So like all that. I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying like that. That might be easy to break down some of the early days now to break them down now and see yeah. like, like, how are you spending your days? Like, if you really take an evaluation of your time, maybe like, um, I've done this in the past and I've been trying to really focus on a writing project. It's like, what am I really spending my time doing that this project isn't getting done? Or why is it taking so long? And like that's really awesome. breaking. Yeah. Yeah. That's not because in the timeline, it can make you kind of like sit there and see, okay, you know, this is what I'm doing. But also you have this much time to get this done too. So you have, you have to get it done. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't have like a, at the yeah, same yeah. time, you what you're, what you're yeah. missing out on too, I guess as well. Like, so, I don't know, I, I, agree with, I agree with you, Joy. I just think, that's what I'm saying, like, to write it down. I think you need to write it down. Like, you telling us is one thing, but, like, writing it down, like, in, on paper is different. So that way you can... And it gets your thoughts clear, because you just told us a bunch of stuff that wasn't clear. Like, it was like a lot, you were like, I don't know, it was like a manic conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, we, but... Part of focusing is focusing. So you have to, if you write it down and you see the words and you make it pretty simple and concise for yourself, then when someone asks you a question, you're not like, like having Tourette's conversation. You're like, this is it. This is my, I'm so confident in this. I've talked about this a million times. I look at the schedule every day. This is what it is. And these are the three sentences I'm telling you, period. And this date, or whatever, yeah. You, yeah you have my goal by May 1st is to have this done. I just, okay. I just think it'll help you like long, long term wise. I just think because it's that even if, I mean, obviously we'll support you whether whichever way you decide to go. Clearly, we want you to go one way, like you know, do something. Else. We want you to do off to go to school, right? But we're not going to not support you either. Makes sense. Yeah. So I just want you to like be successful either way it goes. So if that means, I think writing the timeline down will just kind of help you manage the time in general. Let's, Either way, Absolutely. personally, I know for me, like uh, time management was a, was kind of hard. So you have to kind of just learn how to set a date for something and make sure it's done, or set a time. Like, oh, you know, by you know noon today, I'm going to make sure this is, I have this many things done today, or you know, what I mean, just have to like let's learn how to do that. So for you, telling all that stuff you did earlier was awesome, but I didn't hear like any date, I guess, and that was what I was look like. That's what I was kind of looking for. Like in six months, I'm gonna do this much or this in this year i mean it makes sense so like that's why i was that's why i was asking what your timeline was yeah that's and i mean I, I was trying to and i was kind of um and because we don't have like yeah and that's really just it. we don't have certain um dates like even for working with fort worth you know even for working with ty um he's fitting me in on the days he's not working with other people you know what i'm saying because he's doing it for free you know what i'm saying so it's like we can't really put a date on that because I don't like we can't yeah we I don't have that sort of power you know what I'm saying in this sense because he's more so doing me the favor of like yo well I like your sound so I'm willing to do this with you so it's so all I can really say at this point for like stuff like that is like well this year or next year you know what I'm saying and then stuff for like my projects personally I mean I'm by the end of this year you know doubt I can't give you exact months at this point because of how it is also i'm relying on them as well it's like well you know whenever they're down um and, that, and that's why i'm saying i can only really give you you know dates on like the collab that i'm doing when are you getting the laptop you have four jobs a laptop like a really bomb laptop is fifteen hundred dollars you should have had a laptop with four jobs yesterday yeah, so, well I, I get you so um and i got i have four jobs since i've had four jobs since maybe december um you know what i'm saying since december you said when? January? Cheryl, right. where's the laptop? Oh, hold, on, hold on, Joy. Let me, let me talk. Uh, so, um, so, so January. So I've had four jobs since January. Um, I'm just now reaching, 
I probably have about 2000 at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, with all the money I've saved up, I could go ahead and cash all of it out and get a 1500 laptop, you know what I'm saying? And be like 500. I don't want to do that at this point. I want to save up more money. Um, I want to have like maybe a thousand or two left over. So the laptop probably isn't going to come until later this year. Um, simply because I don't want to just, you know, spend all my money and get a laptop. Because after the lap the laptop, no, the laptop's not it. The laptop's not it. I still have to get the laptop and then the software to put on the laptop. You know what I'm saying? So that's, so I'm counting in the DAWs and stuff. So that's around 2000 altogether. And then um, I also would like to get like a preamp and stuff. So I'm really, I'm really like taking time and building up the finances. And in the meantime, working with who I can to get what I can out. Um, yeah. That's but if, you, if you're so it's not, stuck. It's not like a fast process. This, this is like, a, you know, it's going to take some minutes. I know, but you have to be doing something every day on it. So if you're just, you just told us there's all these things you can't do because you're relying on other people. Your bag is dependent well, on other people. All these things I can't do. Actually, I can't give you all a date because I'm relying on other people. <laughs> I can give you all a date. That's it. Oh, but I can see it's going to be yeah. next week. Replay yeah. this. You just huh? said there's so many things hanging in the balance. You can't give dates because this person is doing this. I have to wait for this person. This person has control over this. The computer is something you can have control over and start to do like basic stuff. And like nobody furnishes a house all at once, for instance, right? So you get your bed, you know, you get your thing. Then Normal you slow, then later on you buy this. Like getting the computer and then saving more up and then getting the software, having a little leftover, then saving more up, then getting whatever the other stuff you said. That's actually like more of the practical way to buy than just dropping four grand after having nothing and haven't really made like big strides in your plan. Well, I mean, see that and I feel like that's debatable because I mean, the only thing I wasn't able to really give y'all was just the dates. I can give y'all this year or next year, but I mean, as far as like stuff, yeah, I mean, I can still work with these people. And I still am working with these people. Um, the laptop and deal, I feel like there is stuff being made towards this progress. I am learning how to produce through my other friends that produce an engineer while we're working on our stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm just not doing anything. I still but have how? Stuff. You can't go to anyone's house. Coming out. You said what? You can't go to anyone's house. We have a pandemic. What are you? Oh, no, no, no. I don't. I, house? Uh, so I haven't been following that exactly. I've been going out to my, my friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, been well, less to be. Huh? She said, she said, yeah, I've not been following that. I've been, but it, the house has been less than 10 people, so like we're good. Okay, well, I be careful. One, I gotta go. I gotta go. Really? I gotta go. That's crazy. That's crazy that he just said that. I'm like, hey, that's the truth, though. So, I mean, I, I'm, I am making that, I almost started to think, like, oh, he can do this on his own. Maybe he doesn't need to go to school. That kind of rationale and that type of like immaturity. I'm ambitious. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. This this virus will not like y'all like. All right. I don't know about y'all. I'm serious about my faith though. And I, I know, know two people like, who have it, so I'm not. Playing I know it. we all know people who got, who got it. You know what no, I'm saying? You know, clearly. You know, but you I just feel like fighting for their lives. Are you kidding me? Yeah. My my thing is like. Oh my God. I'm very, like, I feel like I'm pretty ambitious. I don't really, this virus deal, I'm cool with it. The people that I'm going to are cool with it too. Like, cool with me, with us going to it without, like, Obviously. having any sort of scares <laughs> well, about the virus. Most number of people are in the yeah, and the most number of people, literally, like, two. It's me and the, and the, and the, and the, guy, and the guy. And okay. I, get, I guess, I, mean, well, I don't think that's their deal, though. I think there's, you know, because, like, anybody can get it. You don't know who has it, and they don't you know show symptoms, and they never get sick, and they give it to you, and you die, and you never become an artist. Like what? Hey, look! If I die, I gotta I die. go. I gotta go. I hey, can't. I if love I you. die, I die. If I die, I it was in the plan. I can't. Joy? If I die, God wanted it to happen. Okay, I love you. I support you. I want the best things for you, which is why I feel so passionate about everything that comes out of my mouth. I don't BS on anything. I will yeah. always keep it hundred percent, and I, I speak I appreciate only. It from my experience, because I know what I'm talking about, about the things that I know what I'm talking about, and then the stuff I don't know, I don't talk about. I don't get on Zoom calls about. So I don't want to hear you talk about this virus anymore. It's driving me nuts. I love you. Take care. You guys continue this. Oh, no, I, mean, this I think this is a pretty good, a pretty good ending point. Um, I want to I wanna thank you guys so much for, uh, uh, for just all of your feedback and all of your, um, you know, your discussion, all your wisdom, guys. Like, I really do appreciate this. Um, yeah, I'll be taking this all to heart, and thank you for your time, and yeah, you guys are awesome. I love you guys. Um, 
Yeah, the more discussions. We want you to be successful. So I appreciate and, it. And either way it goes, but you know, <laughs> be safe, please. Though. Yes, Lauren, thank you for softening my approach right there. Look, I'm just here. That's why you're the yin <laughs> to my yin, girl. You know how I am. <laughs>